How y'all doing tonight? Well, my voice is kind of gone from camp, but that's all right. Are you guys ready for tonight to get into the Word? Yeah. Are you guys ready to lean in what God has called you here tonight in this room and this chair to hear from Him? Are you guys ready to lean in and have His presence surround you guys tonight? If you can take something away to your schools in a few weeks and home tonight with your friends this summer. Are you guys excited to get in the Word? Because His Word is alive and real. And it's a freedom that we can actually get into His Word. Amen. So let's dive in. Let's get into prayer and we'll get in the Word. Right. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for tonight. Thank you for your Word that's alive. God, thank you for these students. God, thank you for this room that we're able to worship freely in your name. Father, I pray that these words of you God, I pray that there's wisdom and guidance in this scripture that we can take away tonight, Father. I just pray for that you give me the words to speak to your children tonight, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Have you guys ever been interrupted by something? Have you guys ever been interrupted by something that you're, you're doing a video game and all of a sudden, oh, mom's got, you got to take the trash, or, oh, you got to clean your chores, or do your chores? Yeah. Have you ever been interrupted with something that you did not want to do, or interrupted by someone that's trying to talk to you, and you're like, I don't care, get out of my face, point A to point B, if you're not going to help me in life, I don't want anything want to do with you. Right? Been there. So this. This uh, scripture we're going to get into tonight, we're going to take a little pause with going through the Bible of the year because we have a high school with us. Thank you for joining us tonight. And we're going to go into the uh, book of John, chapter 4, chapters 1 through 26. So if you have your word, you have your phones, please, I trust you guys, open up the word, take this seriously because look, this is a serious time to grow with your walk with the Lord. Let's dive in and see what God says and speaks to us tonight. Chapter 4, verse 1. Now when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself did not baptize, but only his disciples, he left Judea and departed again for Galilee. And he had to pass through Samaria, so he came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. So Jesus was weary as he was from his journey was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman, from, a woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For disciples had gone away to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me? I'm a woman of Samaria. For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Let's take a pause. A few things. Jesus walked through Samaria. He could have gone around Samaria. What happened was, Samaria, the people of Samaria, the Jews and the Samaritans, they don't, they don't, they're not homies. They're not, they don't, they're not friends. Let's just say that racial tension was an understatement. Let's say that they're just the worst enemies. You do not talk to people from Samaria if you're a Jew. You do not go to their town. You do not go to their shops. You do not go through their through their roads. You go around. And so the fact that Jesus decided to go through Samaria is one thing. Second thing, he talked to a girl, a lady. Back in the back in the day, culturally, Samaritan lady, first of all, you don't talk to. And second of all, a lady, you don't talk to. Third thing is, it was, what, 6 hour, 12 p.m. You don't go to the well at 12 p.m. We all know that. We live in Bakersfield, California, where it's 102 at 12 p.m. You either go in the morning or at night. Hold that in your thoughts. Let's continue. So she goes on, right? She says, for Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. You don't have anything to deal with me. Why are you talking to me? Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God, who is that saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. 
the women's still not getting it. This woman is still like, why are you talking to me? There's a reason why I go to the well at 12 p.m. Is that because I'm getting away from the people who are bullying me. I'm getting the people in the way that's, that's talking me down. I'm getting away from the people, my town, that's actually putting me down. That's the reason why I'm here. There's a reason why she's here. And she's like, why do I have to talk to you? The woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw water with. And well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He has given us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water, well enough to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me the water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come to this place to drink again. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husbands and come here. The woman said to answer him, I have no husband. Jesus said, you are right in saying I have no husband, for you had five husbands, and the one you now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you say that Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, so now she, he's still not, she's still not getting it. She's like, why? You don't even have a cup to fill water with. Why are you talking to me? Why are you asking me to give me a drink if you don't even have a cup? To fill. He's like, okay, I'm going to keep pressing on. I'm going to keep asking these questions. I'm going to keep listening to her. I'm going to keep doing it in love. So he tries again. This is the third time, right? He goes, women, believe me. The hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship that, we, that what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming. is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to Him, I know that Messiah is coming. He who is called Christ. When He comes, He will tell us all things. And this is when she gets it. Jesus goes on and says, To her, I, Jesus said to her, I, I speak, is Him. How can we learn from this passage tonight about our lives? What can we get away? <clears throat> There's one point is, is that Jesus went through Samaria. How many, how many times do we not be interruptible? We don't want to go there because we, we, we don't want to be interruptible. Or we don't want to be interrupted, right? Where is our Samaria in our lives? We just don't even want to go there because we don't want to be interrupted because I don't, even, I don't even want to talk to you. I don't want to be friends with you, right? That's one point. Second point that Jesus makes as we are followers of Jesus Christ, or we're called to be just like him, he says, I don't, I'm on my way, but it's not about where I'm going, it's how I'm going. It's where I'm going, right? It's how I'm going to go there. How am I going to get there? It's not where I'm going, it's how I'm going to get there. So he decides to say, hey, I'm going to stop, go through Samaria, because I know I can use a broken lady that is culturally and that is everyone down on her to use him to lift him up. So the question I want to ask you guys tonight is, are you interruptible with your life? Are you interruptible? Are you, are you ready to hear or listen to others? The first thing is, Jesus' purpose was anything that the Father was doing. So are you making yourself the main character tonight, or are you making God the main character in your life? You will miss out what God has planned for you if you continue to live your life not being interruptible. If you continue to live your life being wanting just to do your own thing, you won't listen to others, and then all of a sudden, you're not going to share the gospel, right? You're not going to go into that Samaria world where you know you can be used. Have you ever walked into a room? This is the show is how how selfish we are nowadays. How selfish are we now? Have you ever walked into a room, you know you're going to a party, you know you're going to an event, you know you're going to a situation where you start thinking, okay, what do I dress? Who's going to be there? Who am I going to see? What do I do with my hands? What am I, what am I going to, what do I, what do we, we yelp it, right? We look online, we Google it, right? Because we're so selfish, we want to know how am I going to fit in? How am I, what am I going to do when I get there in that room? And bottom line is because we're making ourselves the main character.
maybe tonight we need to be more interruptible with our plans and focus on what the plans of our Heavenly Father has for us tonight. Maybe this coming school year, maybe we need to take time out of our day to pray for a brother, someone that we walk past in the hallway this coming school year. Maybe we stop, hey, my name is, I go to Amplified, would you like to come to church with me? Right? Be relationable. So Jesus' purpose, there's three reasons through this scripture that we can actually apply to our lives. The first one is Jesus' purpose was to ask questions. Simply ask questions. Jesus said, hey, give me a drink. He didn't ask for her name. He didn't ask what she was doing. He didn't ask where she was from. Give me a drink. He openly just asked a question. There's a little fun fact that you guys might be interested in. Is that throughout the Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, our Gospels, which is Matthew, Mark, and John that wrote about Jesus' uh, missionary, missions trip, his ministry, right? Through all four Gospels, was asked, Jesus was asked 184 questions. All four Gospels, Jesus was asked 184 questions. He Jesus asked 307 questions. And the little other confusing part is out of those 184 questions, he only answered three of them. He only answered three of them. Why did he only answer three of them? Because God doesn't understand. Jesus was not understanding that he didn't get the whole idea of like, it's not about the question, guys. It's about the relationship. I don't care about the answer. I just want to get to know you. I want to be interruptible. I want to ask you a question and start that relationship. Becoming less interested in yourself and become more interested in others. And so Jesus walks up to this lady and addresses the question, give me a drink. And what happened? She was still stuck in her ways. Oh, you can't talk to me. I'm a Samaritan woman. Oh, I'm a... I, you can't talk to me. I, I don't know anything. Jesus did not care. He's being relationable. He just wanted to know you. And the thing is, the second reason is Jesus' purpose was to listen. He asked the question, give me a drink. He listened to her response in love. And sometimes, guys, listening, actually all the time, listening isn't waiting, but actively loving. How often do we ask a question and we just think we can jump to the answer and, oh, no, 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 you don't know it, and just jump over the person? Listening takes love. Jesus wanted to listen to her because why? She ran away at 12 p.m. Getting, going to the well because she was not getting listened to over where she lived. She was getting bullied where she lived. She was getting picked on where she lived. And Jesus knew that. That's what he said, Jesus actively loved her by asking a question and now he listens the thing is that she still didn't get it she was still consumed with her own life she was still consumed with what culture tells you she was still consumed with what the world was telling her how often do we ask a question and we don't listen to God we just go about it, and we let culture fill us in, right? We listen to culture all the time. And then she tries to put off the questions with, I don't, you don't have a cup to fill. Why are you coming to me if you don't have a cup to fill the water? And Jesus goes, let's go there. Let's go there. Why? Because he's listening. He gets it. He's understanding her. And he goes, okay, I'm going to use this opportunity to have no cups to say that you can come to me because I'm living water. You can come to me because I have eternal life. I'm the well of life. You don't have to come at 12 p.m. when it's 102 out every day, trekking water back and forth, trying to harden yourself. What do you even come to me? And so slowly, once he brings up this idea of no cups, and he goes, I'm the living water, there is no need for a cup. 
How hard are we trying ourselves with our wells and our lives, going every day, going somewhere, trying to fill voids, trekking every day? How would you feel if you went to Baker in Bakersfield, you go across town every day, 102 degrees, you get a cup of water, and walk back? That was your thing, every day. Just to get away from getting bullied. Just to get away from the drama in your, in your life. Just to get away from the people that picked you up, picked, you, picked on you. And that's exactly what she's doing. She was filling this void by going to a, a well that was quiet. At the same time, she was literally trying so hard on herself because she was being her character of her, not character of God. She was trying to fill herself up. And so once he brings up this idea of like, okay, let's talk about cuts. <laughs> she starts getting the idea of this is internal. This is living water. And that's our third purpose tonight, is Jesus' purpose is to call us to freedom. You see, Jesus keeps digging deeper and deeper with these questions throughout Scripture. First, he said, give me a, give me a drink. She said, uh, she replies, and he replies more. And he finally gets deeper into theology, into faith, and he listens each time. But he's not just responding, he's listening actively in love, knowing what she needs, which is Jesus Christ. How often do we ask a question to a friend and we respond, oh, I'm sorry for you. Oh, it's okay. No, we should be going, hey, I know the source to my Heavenly Father that can help you. And that's freedom. And we need to remember, and this is something that she remembers, is that when Jesus calls us to freedom and calls us out, he's not having his hands folded this way. He's not having this pull this way. Oh, you tried better. Oh, you missed church. Oh, you did good in school. Oh, I'm disappointed in you. No, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, there's a reason why he went out this way. Simply remind us that he's a heavenly father and he's ready to embrace you as a hug. He's ready to bring you in. And that's something that we remember at the cross is that he goes this way because he's ready to accept you when you are. That's freedom. And he keeps asking his questions. And he keeps listening to her. And he keeps realizing she's broken. She's more broken. She's pretty messed up. She's so messed up that she'd rather walk out in the 102 degree heat all days of a trek to get a little jar of water than hang out in her town getting picked on or getting socially doubt outcasted. And so the thing is that reminder is that Jesus calls us not into con condemnation, but he calls us into invitation. Is that what Jesus said? Hey, come to me. I'm the living well. I have eternal waters. You don't ever have to come back to this well again. Come to me. He's not doing it out of condemnation. He's coming to do it out of invitation. He's inviting you in, saying you do not have to make this trek every day. And maybe this trek for you guys is getting up out of bed in the morning and saying, man, I get to see that person again. Man, I get to... Oh, I have to talk to this person, or, oh, here we go again, another battle with, with my family. But if you openly ask, Heavenly Father, give me the guidance and the words, and you listen to him, he will give you the character change of peace, patience, joy. It gets better. So are we actively walking in freedom? Or we continue to fill ourselves and our wells of trying so hard to be that person in the room that we are so impressed with. Maybe we need to stop looking at ourselves and go into these rooms and say, Father, who do I need to speak to? Who do I need to pray for? Who do I need to talk to? Father, in my schools, who do I need to speak to? Who do I need to pray for? Who do I need to talk to? Father, in my neighborhood, who do I need to see? Who do I need to talk to? Who do I need to pray for? Maybe we'll let go of ourselves and become more interruptible for the gospel than maybe we can actually start seeing what God does for us. If we let ourselves not be the biggest person in the room, but the smallest, let God use us. And say, Father, I'm in this room. I don't know many people. I don't know what's going on. But yet, there's a reason. There's a purpose. And so as this lady is finally getting it, the woman in this area is getting it, Right? She's, act, she's wondering, okay, where do I get this? Where do I get this cup? Where do I get this jar? Where do I get this water? Tell me, tell me, tell me. And she's finally getting a light bulb clicked on because she's realizing it's not out of condemnation, but it's, 
condemnation, but it's out of invitation. It's out of love. He's actively listening in love. He's actively listening for her because he knows that she's in really, really deep trouble. It's not, oh, you'll be all right. Have a good day. Hope to see you again. Or, oh, um, you know, man, I feel so bad for you. No, he's, he takes his time. And he bees interruptible. So where have you been running to fill your jars of water, of void, daily in your wells? The thing is, is that a lot of us have been wanting to fill our jars daily. We go to our wells daily for love, for significance. Right? We go to we go to for for affection, for somewhat wanting. And those are good things. God created emotions for a reason, guys. God created that for a reason. But it's listen, it's what this is where you go about it. It's where what are you doing with that? Are you going towards that from the world? Or are you going to go that with God? Because I guarantee you, if you fill your jar with love, with affection, with completeness in this world, your jar is going to be empty and you will be trekking daily. Hard in a hundred degree heat, sweating for just a little bit of water. But if you let yourself go and say, Father, may I be used by you, then you start finding that love in your Heavenly Father. You start finding that affection in your Heavenly Father. And you start finding that, that support that He gives you. You are loved. And He loves you. So next time you guys go into a room, don't feel like you don't belong. Don't feel like you have to try so hard. Because you are the freedom of what Christ did on the cross when you died and rose again for your sins. It gets better. Let's close this up right here. With 20, chapter, verse 28 to 30. Just as the disciples came back, they marveled at what he was talking with the woman. But no one said, what do you see? Or why are you talking with her? So the woman left her jar, her water jar, and went away to town. <clears throat> Have you ever thought about that? She didn't even take the jar of water with her. That's transformation of your life and your heart. When you don't even take the jar of water, what you're trying to fill yourself up with, she left it. And she went freely. Why did she go freely? Because she knows the freedom. She doesn't have to hold anything on. If you guys don't want to camp, you guys understand what this means. And she went this way, and she said, you can leave that jar there. I don't need to fill myself anymore with that, because I fill myself with the Holy Spirit and my Heavenly Father. I'm going to go forward to the town. It gets better. Check this out. She runs. So the woman left her water jar and went away to town and said to people, Come, see a man who told me all this ever did. Can this be Christ? They went out of the town and were coming to him. She runs back to town. Think about this. She ran back to the people who bullied her. She ran back to the people who picked her up. She ran back to the people who pushed her buttons. She ran back to the people who called her. She's no good. She, she ran back to the people who, who just piss you off in life, right? She ran back to the people and said, you know what? You guys were doing this to me my whole life. I, said, I got away from you. I went to 12 o'clock at the well when no one was there because it's 102 degree heat. And that's how bad it is that you guys messed with me. But you know what? I'm going to go empty handed because I know I have a father that's heavenly, that's Christ in me. That's the reason why in scripture we talk about in Christ you are. In Christ you are. Throughout scripture it says in Christ because you don't have to carry a jar anymore. You can walk openly handed. Don't even have to walk. You run because you're in so much, so much excitement because the Holy Spirit is filled with you. And you go and tell your friends that, you know what? Yes, you were picking on me, but it doesn't matter because I'm in peace. Right? And there's a significant moment of that when there's a jar in your hands. She can still hang it on, but let go of that jar. Leave it there. He said, I don't need to come to this well anymore. And even the father said that. Jesus walked and he said, he told her, he goes, you don't need to come back anymore if you come to me and I give you living water every day. You don't need to wipe that track every day across Bakersfield. 
across the whole town. It's a whole day's journey for a jar of water. How desperate do you have to be? How low in life do you have to be to, to do that? But this lady realized transformation in her life when the Heavenly Father, Jesus, said, I am right here. I went to Samaria to see you, talk to you, and to give you life. So you no longer have to feel this way. You no longer have to feel trapped. You don't feel up to be bullied. You don't feel any of that. Actually, in fact, you don't have to feel that, but go to the actual people who are doing that to you and bring them to me, and I will take care of them. That's what's awesome about this, is she had 100% encouragement to go back to those people that gave her the worst of the worst of her days and say, you know what? Talk to my Heavenly Father. He'll take care of you. Oh, by the way, don't ask for any cups, because he'll talk to you about that. He'll fill you instead. You just listen. So once again, listening is actively loving, but it starts with those questions of a relationship. For example, my wife over here, when we first start uh, not dating, we're friends, she would always walk around and say, how's your heart to people? How's your heart? Start asking questions like that that get people to think. How's your heart? Because yes, how, hey, how's it going? How's this, that? Those are easy questions to walk by. But when you start asking deliberate questions, saying, how's your heart? How are you doing? How's your soul? Let's talk. Questions start relationships. You just don't start dating someone. <laughs> you ask a question, do you want to date? Questions start friendships. Hey, what do you like to do for fun? For fun? What do you like to do after school? Questions start relationships. Relationships listen to each other because actively loving because relationships is love, right? And then all of a sudden, when you start listening, actively loving, then you start knowing each other. And then when you start knowing each other, then you start getting filled up and you encourage each other. So how does this bring us back down to the gospel? First of all, he loved you so much that you don't have to go into any other room for the rest of your life now, feeling empty and alone. When the Father looks at you, he doesn't see sin, but he sees freedom in you. He could have bashed on her, because she's, first of all, Samaria. <laughs> Ooh, you don't cross that railroad track. First of all, he's culturally and ethnically and diversity wrong to do that. But no, he didn't bash on her. He said, no, I don't care about your sin. I don't care what you're dealing with. I want to ask you questions because I want to listen to you. I want to even know you before I can help you. So he invites us to play a part in this. He invites us to play a part in this, in this passage. And that's openly, freely accepting that you are not alone. Like God is in you, around you, and through you. And that now you can go back to the people that, that upset you, picked on you, bother you, and say, hey, I have someone to, I have someone to talk, talk to you. I want to ask you a question. Do you know Jesus? Love. Listen. So why did God have to go through Samaria? It's interesting, the very first section of the passage, right? Now you guys get it. But when I was reading it, it was just another town in your life. Another town in your, in your head that went right through your head, you know, through your ears. But well, why did God go through Jesus, walk to Samaria? Because he knew, he knew that he can use really messed up, broken, anxious, frustrated people to exalt himself. So next time I, I encourage you guys, if you guys are a little bit worried about something, ask a question and listen. That's your player part. And the reason why Jesus went to Samaria is to understand that he's showing us that he uses broken, anxious, upset people to lift himself up, to put himself on display. So does God doesn't want to fill you, but he wants to overflow through you. 
And he doesn't want to call you out condemnation, but he wants to call you out invitation. So that's what we're going to do right now. How will you respond? So the band's about to come up. There's going to be leaders throughout the room. And this is time to do work with you and your Heavenly Father. This is time.